Welcome everyone and we will get started. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Georgiana Boots and I'm Head of Corporate at IRIS. Joining me today is Tony Stevens from Business Health and Business Health was established in 2000 with a team of uniquely qualified professionals located across Australia with global ability. Business Health works extensively with leading fund managers, insurance companies, broker-dealer groups, advisory practices and in individual advisors and offers the most comprehensive range of practice management solutions in the marketplace and is well equipped to help businesses pinpoint their firm's strengths, weaknesses, capitalise on existing client base and increase your profitability. Last year, Iris embarked on a first of its kind research initiative to understand the relationship between efficiency and profitability in advice practices. What we found was that 72% of financial advice businesses expect growth in the short to medium term, and only 6% of businesses surveyed will be operating in the same way as they do now. Further, legislation, compliance, and finding the right people still remain key challenges for businesses. Today, we're gonna to spend some time deep diving into what the research uncovered, as well as what the key takeaways are for advice practices looking to increase efficiency while improving your bottom line. Before we jump in, just some quick housekeeping. This session will be recorded and we'll be sharing the recording after this session. CPD points are available and will be sent out via email after the session. I'll be chatting to Tony for about 20, 25 minutes, after which time he'll answer any questions that you might have. Please feel free to add these questions via the Q&A tab throughout the session. So let's get started. Welcome, Tony. Thank you very much. Great to be here. For those who may not be familiar with Business Health, can you tell us what you do? Sure. Well, we've been, uh, this is our 22nd year of operation. Um, all we do is deal in financial services. So um, we, we cover a wide range of, of business models. Uh, <clears throat> we're lucky enough to work in Australia and overseas. So you know, we work, we've worked in salaried models, we've worked in small independent practices, large practices as well. Um, and um, basically one of the things I guess we've found is that um, our, our, our motto, or if you like, the, the thing that we're really interested in is helping advisors become more efficient, whatever that means um, to them, um, helping them be more profitable and increasing their business value. And I think one of the things that we've been, one of the things that we've seen in over the, the 20 years we've been working with business health and is that, and, and again, being lucky to work in, in uh, we still work quite extensively in the US. We worked in South Africa, New Zealand, the UK. I think that the, the business drivers of those key areas, um, efficiency, profitability, business value are all the same, irrespective of the geography, um, irrespective of the business model, again, whether it's, you know, large independent, whether it's a salaried model, whether it's a corporatized model, the things that drive those things are the same irrespective. Um, and so basically that's, that's, that's what we do. Um, everything that we do um, it drives for those three things. And we're absolutely delighted to, uh, to be involved in this project. And Tony, how many advice practices participated in this research? So what? So in terms of the in terms of the, the, the strategy paper, I guess, or that the paper is that there was over hundred over hundred practices that, that did this research specifically. But I think a lot of the things when we're talking about efficiency and we're talking about profitability and we're talking about other things that we'll talk about things like uh, you know dealing with clients, communicating with clients. We've also drawn from um, you know from uh, a whole bunch of other data that we've got. Again primarily in Australia, including results of health checks, which, we, which is a, a business diagnostic we do, client surveys, and also other diagnostics. So while the results of this specific survey were around 100, we're also drawing from our, our database, if you like, <clears throat> and our experience um, to help round out or, you know, to help also explain the, the, um, the results of this specific survey. Before we get into the details, what was your biggest takeaway from what you uncovered through this? I think that the, the, the biggest, um, it's been interesting because we, we've, we did this survey and, and, and we've also done a couple of, uh, a number of case studies <clears throat> as well, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, as well. And I think 
Absolutely. That the 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 biggest issue that we see is that when you're talking about those efficient businesses, or you're talking about the the the, the businesses that are that are that are doing the best, they see technology very much as an as an investment. It's not a cost. And I think I think that is a really important. It's a really important distinction. And and um, you know people might look at something and they might say, "Look, we've got to do it," or you know, "Look, it, it, it's it's an imposition." And gee, it's you know, it, 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 it's an expense. I think the people who the businesses that really uh, do well is they see it as an investment. They 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 uh, invest the money and not just the money, by the way, but also the time. They invest the time to get their technology right. They invest money to do it, and they and they're looking obviously, therefore, because it's an investment, they're looking for an appropriate return on their investment. Um, and that return obviously can come in terms of uh, of efficiency or the ability to see more clients, um, and certainly to, to be able to um, deliver the kind the kind of advice that they want to um, in the best possible way for them and also for their client as well. So I think um, one of the things that you know that, that, that when you when you look at um, that investment, what it also means is that um, they are able to um, look at not only their internal business, not only you know the way that their business is run, but they also look at the experience of the client. So one of the key outcomes of this is also um, that there is a consistent client experience. Uh, of the advice that, that, that the advice practice wants to deliver. So I think that the um, the 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 key overwhelming thing, because a lot of people, like as, as we'll probably see, different businesses do different things. So it's not necessarily, there's, there's not one size fits all and there's not one right answer. The, 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 the biggest issue though, is that looking at technology as a whole, as an investment, not a cost, I think that's the main thing. Okay, that's interesting. So, Looking through some of the key findings, um, it states that successful firms are efficient firms. So what's the finding there? Okay. So what's really interesting here is that um, I think when you talk to advisors about, when we talk to advisors about what does efficiency mean, I think a lot of the time people will go straight to some of the, some of the research findings here, which we'll, we'll go into a little bit. Um, and, that's, and that's how they define efficiency. And I think, what we see is that the definition of the definition of efficiency can be can can manifest in a number of different ways. Obviously, you know the time taken to uh, do an SOA is an important measure of efficiency. There's no doubt about that. But um, but that's only one measure. So some of the other measures are can be around things like um, the amount of time uh, it takes which manifests itself then into, well, the number of advisors that they can actually see, the number of advisors that, that, that the practice can look after. So it means, yes, we can do an SOA quickly, but it, that, and therefore what that means is that we can do, we can see more advisors. Um, uh, so I think less time on, the, on administrative tasks um, is an important measure as well. So, and again, that, that's, that's uh, also less time that, you know, creating um, that, that they can do more. Um, the other key measures that we've seen is that uh, is uh, SOA production, obviously, and ROA production, as you mentioned. The other, the other thing that we also mentioned in terms of in, in the, the research is that the number of average weekly client meetings are, are higher. So again, that comes back to that, uh, you know, if the outcome is that we can do things quicker so that we can service the amount of clients that we've got and we can have more time, or we can we can service more clients. We can be more efficient, more profitable, more valuable. Um, that's that, that they are some of the key measures around uh, around efficiency. It states that remote working is here to stay. Um, what do you think that actually means for how advice is delivered? Um, okay, so so one of the interesting things here is that with our work in the um, in the in the states. Um, we work with a group of people called TPAs, uh, third party administrators. And, and I guess because of the, ge the geography in, in, in the US, um, they've taken to remote working long before, long before uh, you know, there was any sort of COVID restrictions. So I think one of the things that we've seen with work from home through COVID is that many, many practices were, were really uh, were set up. Um, many practices sort of had to do a bit of work and do a bit of work to, to make sure that was okay. But I think um, 
whether it's the delivery of, uh, of advice to clients through Zoom meetings or through um, client portals, whatever that might be, or actually staff working from home, um, I think what we've seen, or what we're going to see, we're not exactly sure what it's going to be, but we think that there will be a new normal. So we're seeing more and more practices that are um, allowing their staff or even encouraging their staff to work from home um, or more often, if you like, only come into the office, you know, uh, a few times a week or whatever that might be. So, um, so with um, so with working from home, we we think that people have been. Uh, that they have been they have been set up for remote access, you know, using uh, using tools such as Xplan. Um, they are also using other tools such as Zoom, like we're on today. And I think that um, the working from home situation is something that's going to stay, as will be utilizing technology to engage with clients, not necessarily the traditional feed under the feed under the desk and looking at people. It's also going to be uh, if it's convenient to the client. It's going to be delivery of client advice through those mediums as well. This one I found really interesting. Um, the finding was that, um, you know, it's as much about the investment um, as it is about the mindset. Can you take us through that? Yeah. Well, I think what, when you see the, when you see the, um, the, the, the mindset of investment, when you look at what's happening in the, in the marketplace, um, you know there are there certainly are pressure on margins. Um, costs are going up. You know all of the research that we've done says that costs are going up. Uh, revenue has remained steady um, over the over the the last uh, you know the last twelve months because of obvious reasons. And so so that mindset around um, around using, utilising technology is really important. One of the other things that we'll probably see is also, and again, this, this, this is something that, that, that's coming out of the States as well, is that um, when you have uh, more people working from home, when you have more people that are working remotely, what that basically does is it, it, takes, the, uh, it takes the geography out of the situation. So um, then what you're looking at doing and what we've seen in the states happen is that the um, that the competition for uh, the competition for staff becomes even greater because now that we've got people that are working from home more if you've got somebody that's that, that that's really good that's working a thousand kilometers away that doesn't matter so much so in terms of this mindset uh, you know uh, uh, increasing expenses, um, you know, revenue remaining relatively still. Um, you've got an awful lot of your of the of your uh, of an advisor's expenses are in staff. So getting staff is really really important. Um, so and then of course you know the the, the um, as we mentioned before the increasing or sorry well re, uh, expenses that are increasing revenue that's remaining the same or even dropping means that profit margins drop. So again, it's all part of that that mindset of uh, of looking at the business in totality, but making sure that they're making technology work for them, not not technology, not not so that technology works for the advisor, not the other way around. Yeah, that's interesting. And you, it talks in the report about context switching. So uh, you know, people logging in and out of different systems throughout the day, and most practices are doing this. What impact is this actually having on businesses' efficiency yeah. and and also their ability to you know for the client experience? Yeah. So one of the, one of the one of the key things, one of the key pieces of research that came out was that um, and, and you know this sort of it makes sense is that businesses that um, businesses that only have to enter their data into one system and then use that one system for all of the client delivery, whether it be the advice or other things, that, that they are more efficient, okay? So, um, you know, entering data into three or four different systems and then trying to use that data, even though, you know, where there are APIs, you know, uh, around now, and, you know, I know you guys are using a, a, a APIs a lot more now, which is fantastic. But I think that what the research tells us is that, um, is that the... Uh, businesses that can try and put the the uh, the the or use the technology from the one platform, it's more efficient, um, and therefore they don't have to 
uh, spend time double, you know, double counting or, or, or putting um, data in, in, into into all different sorts of into different sorts of software, um, which obviously does make it uh, inefficient. And you know, you would think that would be the case, um, but when you look at the research, it certainly shows that out. Yes, I think most people can uh, appreciate that one. Um, the research found that advice practices all agree that their operational models need to change, um, and with only 6% of them saying that um, it will stay the same in, in three years' time, why do you think that might be? Well, I think, again, when you look at, you know, without sort of going over, the, the you know, the, the, the findings, again, or, or there are some similar themes going through, so I'll try and answer this one reasonably quickly, I guess. The similar themes are, is that um, there is compliance. Now, I didn't really want to use the word compliance in the in this webinar because it's, you know, now everyone's sick of hearing about it, but there is compliance. There is government legislation. You know, we may have a change of government shortly. We may not, who knows, but, you know, things are going to change there. We've got, um, we've got revenue that is uh, under pressure. We've got expenses that are rising. We've got uh, we, we, we're constantly um, constantly trying to uh, keep our good staff, trying to recruit our good staff. Uh, there is new software, new competitors coming into the marketplace all the time. Um, there are new client uh, new client engagement tools. There are new uh, client portals, and so really, when you look at all the change that's happened in the last two years three years, um, that change is only going to, it's only going to get bigger, we think. Um, there is still going to be considerable change in the way that we do things. There is going to be increases in technology. There are going to be, you know, we've heard about AI and blockchain, and I don't really know what those things mean, but it makes me sound smart. But there is going to be a lot of things happening. And I think that, that, that advisors really have to understand uh, what are those things going to mean and again, from from the results of the survey, and again from our general from our general consulting, if you like, the advisors that are going to do the best are going to be the ones that, are, that adapt to that change, and they adapt to it quickly, and they and they leverage their investment in technology as much as they can. Mm. Yep, bringing that back to that mindset. Can you talk through what the key characteristics of a highly profitable business is, and and what is the difference between one that is you know highly profitable versus other firms out there? Well, I think, uh, again, um, the, uh, the, the easy answer is uh, the, uh, you know, profitability is, is a, a, you know, a function of revenue and expenses. But I think, as I, as I mentioned before, so when we, when we go back and we, and we talk about that investment in technology, we also look at, like, investment in staff. Now, um, all the stats that we've done here in Australia and overseas as well is that staff is the biggest is the biggest cost, if you like, is the biggest item on the on the profit and loss statement, and um, and I think so. The investment in staff, one of the one of the findings I think we I think we found is that um, uh, if you look at you know like being a recovering accountant, I guess sometimes when you look at at, at the staff number, if, if if your staff cost is above the benchmark. Uh, and the accountant might say that's a bad thing. What we find, what we find, however, is that, it, that that's not necessarily the case. So it's about the investment in technology. It's about the investment in staff. Um, it's about it's about getting the most, getting the return, getting that return on investment. Um, and I, I think also in terms of profitable businesses, the other key things like um, having a business plan, working that plan, and making sure that we're that we're. Uh, leveraging all of the investments that we're making. Would you say a part of that is um, where you're asking your staff to focus? You know, is there particular jobs and functions that staff are doing that potentially technology could be doing? Is that yeah. impacting the profitability of businesses? Absolutely, no doubt about that. And I think what what we found what you found is that the particularly the tasks that staff are doing that are um, I don't know that. So, so, so really, I think a rule of thumb would be that any any process, if you like, or any any process that um, that technology can do that the staff member hasn't got to do, 
then that that's when you're looking at leveraging that investment in, in technology that we talked about previously. So I think the most important thing, you know, even from a from a from an advisor perspective, is the thing that we found is that um, advisors are at their most effective, at their most profitable when they're in front of clients. So anything that we can do to get advi an advisor in front of a client is going to be the best thing, not only for the client but also for the practice as well. And then if you and, and then and then anything that you've got there in, in terms of staff, if technology can do that tasks, then the staff you can either reduce your staff level or you can get your staff doing other things, which is going to add to that client experience. So I think that's that that's certainly um, part of part of the part of it as well. So looking at everything we've discussed and 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 all these insights, where where does a business start if they want to sort of you know pick this up and, and start doing something? It's a really good question, and I think I think one of the things that uh, one of the things that we that we've absolutely found, and again this this sort of comes back also to um, when when the when the case studies are available, which will be shortly, and, and you get to have a look at those if you like, is that. I think that one of the consistent themes with the case studies, with the advisors that we've seen, and again with the consulting work that we do, is that um, all all the really successful and profitable businesses have a very clear understanding of what they want. Okay, so they they basically they have an advice process. They understand how they want to how they want to how they want that process to evolve. They understand um, how they want to engage the client in that process, and what they then do is they then use technology to um, basically um, um, implement that advice process. So again, whether that be internal from a staff perspective, or whether that be from a client outcome, whether it be as we mentioned before about you know repetitive tasks, um, when we look at things like compliance. You know, um, whether it's the, the development of the ROA or the development of the SOA, you know, utilising your, you know, licensee or utilising your, your, your compliance resources, um, all of those things, having a very clear idea about what it is that you want before you go and then um, uh, go down this technology path is very important. And I think one of the things anybody who's ever built a house, um, I think I think a really a really clear analogy is if anyone's ever been, uh, they've tried to build a house and then they've made uh, they've made changes on the way through. Some of those changes, the variations as they call them, can be very expensive. So, and I, and I and I think certainly in terms of investment in technology, that's very similar as well. So, um, so the more that you can understand and articulate the the, the type of advice, the way that you deliver advice. Um, and then get technology to implement it is really important. And one of those things, as I'll give you an example, is when we look at the case studies, is that um, all successful businesses that we spoke to, fantastic businesses, um, some really like the idea of a client portal. Other businesses don't necessarily think that that's the best thing for their for their client base. So again, um, should should you should your business have a portal for clients to log in to see everything? That's up to you. But you decide what you want to do before you go down that process. There is no right answer. Very successful businesses do. Very successful businesses don't. Doesn't matter. But the most important thing is to understand what it is that you want first. I think that would be that would be for me. Um, get the plan right, understand what your process is, document that process, and then get the technology to implement that process in the most effective and efficient way. So if uh, practices are wanting to um, look at some tools to help them sort of go through this process, um, what can you offer in relation to that? Look, we've, we've got a few tools, and I think for those of you who, who, haven't, who, who haven't seen us, I'll just go through a few quickly. We've got a we've got a, a diagnostic an online diagnostic product called a health check. Now it's a qualitative and quantitative uh, benchmarking uh, tool of, of of the advisor's business. And I think one of the things that that's important here is sometimes um, you know in terms of the technology and other things, there's so many so many different areas that it sort of looks at when it it goes into client management, it goes into the business plan, it goes into staff. So what, what we try and provide is an overall view of um, what the capabilities of the business are at the moment, because it could be that there might be some things you need to do, as an example, 
uh, you know, what kind of data do you keep on, on your clients in the database? It doesn't matter how good or bad your CRM is. If the data isn't there, it doesn't matter. So some of those sorts of questions are important. Um, we have a client survey. Um, now, our client survey is um, uh, it's, it's, it's independent and it's anonymous. Um, so basically, the, you as the advisor send out the survey to your clients. They, they then respond. We don't know who responds. You don't know either. Um, and it's it's really if you're looking at you know um, is my advice being delivered well efficiently are, are, are my clients appreciating it there's no better way there is no other way to do it than do a client survey um, we do a benchmarking uh, a benchmarker which is financial benchmarks only which again can help you look at things like your key drivers of efficiency around numbers of staff numbers of clients clients per advisor those sorts of things. And then what we've also got is um, a staff survey. So if you're looking at things like transitioning from all in the office to work from home, how are your, how are your staff feeling about it? Uh, you know, what, what, what do they really think? Again, that's confidential and anonymous as well. Again, it can be a very valuable tool. So they're just some of the, some of the tools that, that, that we provide. Obviously, there's other tools out there that you can look at as well. But I think it's, it's, it's important that you have a, an overall understanding of your business and where you want to go before you um, jump in and make that that investment in technology. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. I'd like to, um, on top of that, uh, mention that, you know, if, if you'd like a technology health check with the systems that you're using um, through XPlan or, or APIs, um, please contact your IRIS representative and we'd be more than happy to um, go through that process um, as well alongside Tony, your business tools. So just to wrap up before we do some Q&A, um, you know, people on the call today, the hang up, what do you think the first thing they should do? First thing they should do is um, write a something down on a piece of paper that is one thing. I don't care what it is. Um, call, your, call your technology consultant, call your licensee, call Iris, call you, you know, whatever provider that you've got. I think the most important thing is to do one thing. Um, and if that thing is to uh, document your processes or to review to review your processes or to uh, find out what your staff think or find out what your clients think. I think the most important thing, I think a lot of times, you know, whether it's a conference or whatever it is, we'll go through these things. There's, you know, there's there might be five or 10 things that they want to do. And then, uh, you know, and then it comes to, you know, six months later, it's like, geez, I was going to do that. Um, or it might be, uh, I did that six months ago and it worked really well and it worked so well, I haven't done it since. So, do something. Makes sense. All right, so we're just going to um, pause there and just have a look at a couple of the Q&A for you, Tony. Um, so firstly, one has come through um, asking, where can I get a copy of the full report? Um, we'll, we'll send one out alongside um, an email and I'll go through a couple of those details when we wrap up. So everyone will get a full copy of that. Um, another question is, is there an average of how many clients um, per advisor is a sweet spot? I guess there's version of today, as you say, compliance and a few other things kind of, um, you know, um, create that sweet spot. But for profitability, is there, is there an average of what advisors should be aiming for? So, look, again, it's a really, it's a good question. And I wish I could give you a really easy answer. But um, the, the answer is, is that I, I can tell you that the average number of clients per advisor is roughly around 240, I, I think, and that's around 300 and 300 odd in a, in a practice. Now, um, what, what, what you can do is you can have a look at, if you, if you have a look at our benchmark resident example, and again, sorry for the product log, but um, what we'll do is we can compare the number of clients per advisor across a number of different, so again, smaller practice, practices, medium practices, larger practices are my most profitable practices. Now, that very much depends on, that answer very much depends on the type of advice you're providing, the type of infrastructure you've got, and the type of investment you've made in that infrastructure. So what you'll find is that um, having more clients isn't necessarily, having more clients doesn't necessarily mean that you're more profitable. So it very much depends on what, on what, on, on the services that you're offering your clients. Again, uh, you know, like uh, uh, there's, there are many practices out there who have risk-only clients. Risk-only clients have a different compliance obligation to full financial planning clients. So, um, so if you're looking at around 
240, I think, 230, 240 is about the average per, per advisor. That's not the right answer. It's just the average answer. It very much depends on what you want to do, but I would encourage you to um, have a look at, 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 at to bench. There's one of the, that's one of the benefits of benchmarking yourself in a quantitative basis. Um, again, depending on the turnover of your business and the size of your business. Yeah. And you mentioned um, there's a question here around fast SOA production um, as an indicator um, of profitability. Uh, the question is, is there some ways that top firms are doing this um, has, has enabled them to do this quicker? Um, well, again, what, what, the, what the research tells us is that the, the uh, how, can I, how can I say this, the more mundane steps in the process are handled by workflow processing, right? So I think you, uh, uh, Iris, I think call it threads. So basically, yeah. It's basically, uh, and we'll, 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 we'll talk about uh, in the case studies when they come out, one of the practices that I spoke to have over 100 threads, different threads in their business. Okay, now, again, is that the right thing? Not necessarily for your business, but the, the absolute key to it, the absolute key is having a very clear understanding of what you want your document to, what you want your SOA document to look like, how the data gets into that, again, whether it's, um, you know, uh, some some advisors have have clients enter their data indirectly into their CRM. Other 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 advisors, um, you know, they, that that's a staff function. Now again, it makes sense if if the, if the clients are putting in their data <clears throat> directly, that's going to be more efficient. That doesn't mean it's the right thing, but that's just an example. So again, any of those mundane those mundane areas, those mundane tasks that staff are doing automate them as much as possible. And I think the other thing then that we've seen is that in terms of that workflow processing and those threads is having a very clear um, uh, expectation about when uh, when tasks are due and then managing those tasks is also an important, an important component. Absolutely. We don't have any other uh, questions on the Q&A, so um, I think that's all we have time for today. If anyone would like further information on what we have discussed um, and how you can apply these insights to improving your business, please reach out to your IRIS representative. We will send an email with the recording of today's session along with your CPD points and a link to the full advice efficiency survey report. Please join me in thanking Tony for his time today and we hope that you found today's session informative. Thank you and see you next time. Thank you very much. Good luck.